Hi everyone, uh, back to Nini's room today and today's episode is special because my guest today is very good friend of mine from Unfrail. Hi, Brisa. How are you? Hi, Ninis. I'm good and I'm really happy to be here. <laughs> Thank you for coming. So everyone, Brisa is the new executive director of Unfrail. Unfrail, Unfrail is the Asian network for uh, free election. Uh, Unfrail is an uh, organization that focus in monitoring election in Asia. And Perludem is one member of Unfrail in Indonesia. Actually, in Indonesia, there are three members of Unfrail, uh, Perludem, uh, KIPP, and GPPR. And uh, last election, uh, Unfrail did monitoring Indonesian election in February 2024, and they, they just uh, launched the report. You can download the report on Unf Unfrail's website, unfrail.org. So, Brisa, uh, we are now talking about uh, yeah, election and democracy uh, generally, yeah, actually, because if we talk about democracy in Asia, especially, uh, the situation maybe is not really good. Yeah. Uh, the declining of democracy is not only happening in Indonesia and your country, Philippines, maybe, yes. <laughs> but it happens <laughs> generally. So what do you think about the, the si democratic situation in Asia? Um, actually... Um, when we are assessing every time the, the democracy in Asia. So the very important, we, also, we, o we always have the, these three aspects. We always look at the legal framework. At the, at the same time, the mass participation, not only the civil society organizations, but also the government agencies. And at the same time, the, renew the representation and the, govern the governance itself. So right now, considering the three to four aspect, it's really declining. Mm -hmm. But at the same time, what's stable right now is that even the democracy is declining, the participation is still on the stable level. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So that's uh, what's the trend right now in our region in Asia. And it's really hard, no? Mm -hmm. Especially every time we monitor the elections, we mm -hmm. are bound to say that sad reality right now so yeah, that's it mm -hmm. for the regional mm -hmm. trend. So what is the big challenge as a, a observation organization? Is it uh, hard to uh, what to because it is vol voluntarily right? Yeah. yeah. And now maybe people is not really uh, pay much attention in monitoring the whole process of the election. So what is the big challenge? Actually, in observing the elections in Asia. Um, mm -hmm. The first challenge is the openness of the country, okay. whether whether that country would accept observers or not. Mm -hmm. So that's one challenge because not all is um, very open mm -hmm. to accept or even uh, you will be invited. So you're mm -hmm. not sure of that. So mm -hmm. that's one thing in election observation. We cannot push ourselves to be in that country in one election. Second is to... Um, recruit volunteers, of course. Mm -hmm. Volunteers in terms of um, with expertise who can be yeah. observers. Because you cannot just put a person just to tackle those issues that you want to uh, take up in a particular country. So that's second. And third is in, in investing in younger mm -hmm. observers. That's, so that's also a challenge because, of course, it is deeply rooted in our history and culture that uh, it is our elder first, yeah, yeah. our <laughs> bosses first. Yeah. But we're trying to put some innovations on that because we want to invest in new younger generations Mm -hmm. of, of observers who can have expertise. Mm. So, who, yeah, yeah, right now, actually, we are investing in training new observers mm -hmm. because that would be the future of election mm -hmm. observation because there's also a decline mm -hmm. when it comes to election observation. Not all, particularly, they don't want to support right now election observation, that one big comprehensive mission. Mm -hmm. They're asking for some particular issues, what to take... Uh, what to look at. 
So they are not that fond of now a mm. big mission. So right mm. now we are still innovating on that mm. aspect. So uh, what what uh, what does Anfrel do to to yeah you said talking about the capacity, yeah. talking about how to increase uh, especially the young generation awareness to uh, monitor the election. So w- w- what 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 Anfrel do on that? So right now because Anfrel has 28 members. Mm-hmm. But of course to be honest not all are yeah. active. Yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> so that's the reality yeah. in a member based organization. Mm-hmm. But we're trying to do our best mm-hmm. to reach uh, to reach out to them mm-hmm. because one thing for sure they're also doing their own work mm-hmm. and they're focused on their own country as well and we also value that. Mm-hmm. But uh We have this Asian Academy for Electoral yeah. Integrity. So it started last year. Mm-hmm. So just last year. Because we really wanted to invest in younger observers. Mm-hmm. So right now, it's in the first phase. Mm-hmm. So the second phase would be inviting uh, these same fellows to have expertise. Mm-hmm. So there will be some um, electoral integrity issues and processes mm-hmm. that will be a uh, methodology actually they will be trained on new methodologies on how to observe the elections effectively mm-hmm. on which they can apply in their own country but at the same time as part of the capacity building uh, efforts of ANFEL it can complement mm-hmm. on the methodology that ANFEL is currently applying so that's one and the second one of course is to investing in new methodologies yeah. we learn and relearn mm-hmm. uh, about the methodologies which can uh, which is much applicable to a particular mm. country because not all can fit so you need to customize mm-hmm. each method that mm-hmm. can fit uh, in the legal framework of the country also so uh yeah sometimes when we are doing uh observing the elections yeah not all of the stakeholders like to accept yes. that the election is being monitored Mm-mm. being observed uh do you also face for example like intimidation on the field or yes <laughs> <laughs> I don't, I'm not happy yeah, about that, yeah, but yeah. it's always the memorable part mm-hmm. when you're doing the mission, because sometimes they are being intimidated also when you wear the vest, for example. Yeah. There's a word election mm-hmm. observer on the uh, at the back of your uh, at in your mm-hmm. back, so that part it intimidates the people and at the same time the election workers because there are uh, not only uh, eyes mm-hmm. who will watch their mm-hmm. work but also they are intimidated because they might get reported yeah so that's one second is that the flow of information mm-hmm. For example, it might be known in the central areas that there will be international observers, but in the rural areas or those uh, not that familiar mm-hmm. with the process of having international observers. So the flow of information, it doesn't get there. So you need to introduce and reintroduce yourself when, uh, what ANFEL is doing. Mm-hmm. So that's also a challenge for us because yeah. sometimes we cannot really enter a polling center mm-hmm. for example um, we just gonna monitor it far from the polling station but we cannot see anything yeah. because they don't believe that mm-hmm. uh, ANFEL is accredited they are invited mm-hmm. to observe the election so that's actually part of the uh, logistical challenges when doing a mission yeah, yeah. And in 2024 is like a major election in the world. Like, like how many countries? Uh, 40? Eh, no. More than more 50. Than, yeah, more, more than, than 50. Yeah, yeah. More than 50 countries are having the elections. And so, w- what is your uh, what uh, your your take in this big election around the world? Actually, we always see the election, especially mm-hmm. when you are particularly involved. We always mm-hmm. see the election as an opportunity to, mm-hmm. you know, introduce electoral innovation. Mm-hmm. You renew the representation. You make the elections better because we all know no system is perfect. But every time we see an election, this is a good opportunity for every stakeholders. Mm-hmm. So right now, this 2024 super elections, yeah. actually we see this 
as a learning opportunity for each and every one of us to get the best practice practices mm. to prevent the bad ones so we see that as a learning opportunity mm-hmm. and one i think one challenge that faced by i think many countries in the election is uh, the use of social media mm. uh, with disinformation issues uh, it's it's happened uh, everywhere, everywhere. <laughs> <laughs> and do you think that we need Uh, what we need specific instrument in observing in social media um, when it comes to social media mm. I always say that it should fit the legal framework and level mm. of democracy of a country since uh, for example the approaches is either you regulate the content mm-hmm. or you produce more transparency approaches or initiatives uh, we are on this side mm-hmm. so we are not actually pro on regulating the yeah. content Uh, of course, with our primordial right of freedom of expression. Mm-hmm. So on that side, we are actually pushing for more transparency approaches and initiatives. And we are really hoping that uh, an election management body would be keen on taking proact- proactive steps and efforts to uh, do transparency mm-hmm. initiatives. Mm-hmm. But when it comes to social media monitoring, Um, it depends on the focus. Mm-hmm. So if you're targeting probably disinformation, misinformation, um, one actual challenge would be what would be the definition of disinformation in your country. Mm-hmm. So actually that's one of the trends that we are uh, we saw in the past elections because when you try to uh, monitor the social media, um, what would be the definition of disinformation mm-hmm. would you adopt the international standard yeah, yeah. or would you define it according to your legal framework so mm-hmm. that's one so but in monitoring social media uh, we always advise to take the, a look at the legal framework because right now the trend is that it is not part of the legal framework it's still mm-hmm. not being uh, regulated because it's part of the innovation the most of the laws focus on the traditional media and yeah. not on the social media yeah. mm-hmm. and the other challenge uh, in election not only happen in indonesia uh, in asia is the use of state resources yes, yes. <laughs> it's like yeah uh, we know the terms of pork barrel, barrel politics uh, it happens also in the countries that unfrail monitor yes mm. <laughs> P- probably i won't look at my country <laughs> yeah, yeah. <right> now. <laughs> but yes 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 in in which uh, in which stage of election that usually this, the use of state resources is being uh, utilized by the the election contestant actually when election period starts mm-hmm. so it's it's, it's usually rampant begin- Uh, on that um, period mm. but you would you would always you can also see um, abuse of state resources post elections mm. because actually it's being legitimized as part of their governance program right yeah so it uh, one important aspect actually is post elections also mm-hmm. because in campaign period it's really hard to regulate because people are really invested in campaigning to those mm. political parties and candidates introducing mm. themselves but um, uh, most of the time they overlooked mm-hmm. the you know the resources being used by the candidates or political parties but at the same time in post elections mm-hmm. um, they're still happy they're still <laughs> you know they're still overwhelmed with the mm-hmm. results but you would see it's part of the governance program and they yeah, yeah. So the the tendency to overlook mm-hmm. it transcends until post elections. So it, is it is it hard to monitor this issue, the state of its uh, abuse of state resources? It's really hard mm-hmm. because the trend right now is you need to do long term observation. Yeah. So you cannot do it in a, for example, in just campaign period. Mm-hmm. You really need to document mm-hmm. and identify what type of abuse or misuse of state resources because there are a lot but what is the most popular right now being recognized is the financial resources mm. because sometimes it is being transformed in into a form of social services social assistance yeah, yeah, yeah. so that's the trend actually um, 
Actually, in our Asian culture, we cannot. <laughs> uh, it's really hard because it's deeply rooted also in our culture, yeah. in history, um, that kind of politics. But it's really hard to monitor if if we don't document it properly, mm-hmm. because um, you document it according to your framework also. Mm-hmm. But it's really hard if that if your law is not recognizing this kind of abuse. Yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 yeah, like in Indonesia, talking about social assistance, mm-hmm. for example, it, it's also happened, not only in the national election, but also local election. And actually, sometimes people say that if you criticize about the uh, social assistance, then you uh, y- you are not agree that it is people's right to get the social assistance. Mm-hmm. Yeah, actually, yes, it is right. But the problem is it is being claimed by the actor the political actor and yeah talking about the budget yeah they 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 they've done it like long before the election <laughs> yes. to prepare the whole uh the whole process and uh, anfrel is uh, doing monitor for indonesian election i think since uh, 1999 election after 1999 we don't have international observers. Mm. I think, yeah, twen- 2004, 20, nah, 2009, 2014, 2019, and now after 1999, then we have again <laughs> international observation for our election. So what is Anfrel's uh, recommendation for Indonesian election or your, your findings in Mm-mm. Indonesian election? Actually, during the um, launch of the interim report, we practically said that generally the elections was um, orderly and peaceful, especially mm-hmm. the election day. But we really saw those uh, problems that transcends mm-hmm. about the standards on accountability mm-hmm. and transparency of the election process. Mm-hmm. When it comes to accountability, we saw the problem on abuse of state resources in elections. Um, actually, the time we entered the mission, actually, it was the time that there were calls, mm. heeding calls, that to stop uh, distributing some kind of social assistance. And mm. we, uh, that's the bansos, that's what yeah. we were hearing before when we entered the, the mission. So that's one on that accountability aspect. The other one of course, is on the pervasiveness of misinformation mm-hmm. and disinformation, especially on the treatment on generative AI. Mm-hmm. The mm-hmm. third one was the, of course, because the problem on the abuse of state resources mm-hmm. in elections, there were issues also on the uh, competence of the KPU and the Bawaslu mm-hmm. on handling those uh, complaints. Mm-hmm. And at the same time, the biggest problem that we saw is with regard to the enforcement of the legal framework. Mm-hmm. So that was the uh, issues uh, long before we entered the mission because we also did some desk research before mm-hmm. we started the mission. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And for, yeah, yeah, we, we also do lesson learned from every country that uh, Anfrel monitored the election. And uh, what when, what can we learn in this super election? <laughs> uh, more than 50 countries. What can we learn each other, uh, Riza? Um, I would say... Um, I would say on the first aspect would be the participation. Mm-hmm. Um, actually, it's really hard that in every election, this is the time of renewal. So it's really hard for everyone. Mm -hmm. But at the same time, every time we have elections, we are equal on our rights. We are entitled to the same kind Mm -hmm. of vote. So that's one. The the learning would always be on the belief that that change can happen, at least if there's an election. Because, you know, we're still lucky that we're still having elections because some countries are not having elections Mm -hmm. at all. Second uh, is on the aspect of um, enforcement of the uh, legal framework and the laws. Mm. It's always a learning for us because not all can still have the remedy to appeal or to 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 bring these issues be, be, before the Supreme Court or any constitutional court. As long as there are remedies available, we're s- we still have this hope 
mm-hmm. that the democracy will still continue and work. So mm-hmm. that's always a learning uh, for us, a learning opportunity whenever we monitor an election. And at the same time, we are saying this not to bring, not to bring or um, or bring a false hope, but mm-hmm. we're still lucky enough. Our countries yeah. are still having an election. Yeah. Uh, yeah, we cannot take democracy for granted. Yes. But what we are doing now is to yeah to protect uh, democracy because so many maybe so many actors like to uh, what to yeah to change democracy regime to maybe an authoritarian regime. So next, uh, which country that you are going to <laughs> monitor? <laughs> um, um, it's it will be Sri Lanka. Okay, and then Philippines. Oh yeah. So um. Yeah, Philippines will be having their um, own super election. Mm-hmm. There will be three elections next year. Then mm-hmm. Sri Lanka. Um, after so many debates, wh- whether, <laughs> whether it they will, will be whether <laughs> will, there will be an election like or not. not. <laughs> yeah. So yeah, so there will be Sri Lanka mission and Philippines mission. But at the same time, we're still looking at small missions in mm-hmm. between, uh, especially for example Mongolia. Um, it's mm-hmm. on the 28th of this month, mm-hmm. so we're still having um, discussions whether to put up a very small mission mm-hmm. just to take a look on what's happening. Also, so there will be some in between small missions. Uh, among the big missions that uh, we're planning to observe. Okay, last question uh, from me, Brisa. Talking about the inclusivity of the election, Mm-mm. you also uh, pay attention on uh, yeah inclusiveness of the election, uh, people with disabilities, and also marginalized group. Uh, you uh, in your uh, organization, Lente, also focus on. Uh, specific electoral district in uh, Bang Samurai, if I'm not mistaken. Yes, yes, yes. Yeah, yes. yeah. So, uh, what is the challenge for to make sure that the election is uh, inclusive for everyone? Actually, the biggest challenge would always be the uh, probably two sides. Mm-hmm. Uh, on the first side would be the capacity of the election management body mm-hmm. to you know to move these issues. Mm-hmm. Um, near the stakeholders concern mm-hmm. actually there is always a gap on that mm-hmm. because sometimes uh, those in the um, bureaucracy mm-hmm. they are not um, experts mm-hmm. on that issues and the gap cannot be addressed if they're not talking directly to the stakeholders mm-hmm. involved or to the persons involved that's always the gap they're talking mm-hmm to the those persons not actually part of the sector mm. so they're not consulting directly and second on the part of the sectors because of the frustrations that's happening at least on um, the experiences and perspectives that I've heard uh, on the part of the sector the the problem would always be the frustration on mm-hmm. how to implement what's in place mm-hmm. so um, Another would be actually on the legal aspect. Sometimes it's not directly addressing the issue. So there's no full enforcement. Mm -hmm. So sometimes EMB tends to innovate, Mm -hmm. but there's still a law that needs to be fully implemented. So yeah, so that's always the problem when it comes to inclusion. But what's what's, what's important is that in an election, there should be dedicated persons who would handle yeah. the issues of the sector because it's actually different on the general voters. If there would no, no persons who will uh, focus on that particular aspect, for sure it's uh, always problematic. Mm-hmm. So it's important to invest to people who have expertise, who can um, directly consult the stakeholders in order to make the elections more mm-hmm. inclusive. Okay, Brisa. Thank you so much. <laughs> Good luck with Anfrel, and we are very happy to collaborate in the next mission. Yay! <laughs> so thank you so much, Brisa, for coming to my podcast. Of course, <laughs> I'm very happy and proud to be one of the of your guests in Nini's room. Thank you, thank you so much, and thank you everyone for watching this episode. See you next time. Three, two, one.